Thank you for joining us today on Rise Positive Birth Stories. I'm here with Sana, and she's going to tell us more about a few of her births, namely Fatima. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so uh, I'm a mother of three beautiful girls, and um, I'm blessed to have experiences of beautiful births. Um, to begin with, my first uh, was born five years ago, and um, um, it was not the most pleasant experience. Um, not because birth is ugly, but because I was unprepared and because I was just blindly following the protocol of, you know, the hospitals and the so-called well-meaning family. And um, I just went into the birth, you know, not knowing anything. Okay. And uh, the minute I stepped into the hospital, I was at the mercy of the medic and everybody else. And uh, my baby came out uh, with a C-section. Uh, with an emergency C-section and um, for no reason really. So when uh, Hannah was born, um, it was after the birth that actually my journey to, you know, learn more about birthing and why did I have such, uh, you know, an ugly experience began. So the, the question, okay. yeah. So the questions came post my first baby's birth. So when I was expecting my second one, um, I happened to join a natural birthing course Okay. called the Imani course and it was a 10 week program which I went through very you know good studently diligently <laughs> diligently yes and uh, but when the birth came maybe it was because I had learned too much okay. that I was not able to kind of put everything into action so the birth um, did happen to go through quite a few interventions I had to have an epidural and like, I, I didn't experience the sweetness of labor, I would say, you know, like, okay. Uh, but by the time the third one was on the way, <laughs> and the birth that you're talking about with Fatima is when I was ready mentally and I was charged up to put everything that I knew into action. Okay. And um, the idea was to see that dream birth unfold. You know, and that's how Fatima came with no interventions. And you were there, so you know <laughs> that. There was um, absolutely, you know, I, I felt that it was me, you know, it was me through and through, it, okay. throughout the birth. Okay. So how, how did you prepare then for Fatima? Because you had already gone through the course. Yes. So course. this time around, I was putting everything into action. So I was firstly being very happy. And like a sweet bird had told me, like, you know, don't care about people who take offense because if they can get offended by a pregnant woman, mm -hmm. they can get offended by anything. So I stopped caring about, like, I was living in a bubble okay. the entire nine months where I was being very, very selfish, just taking care of myself, doing my exercises, joining swimming classes, you know, okay. doing everything that I had read about in magazines. Okay. And, you know, like, oh, so and so is doing that. And I was trying everything. I was doing um, uh, Cairo for myself. Okay. And I was doing getting acupuncture done and having my herbals and everything. And yeah, when by the time the birth came, I was like absolutely ready for it. Kind of mentally and physically. Mentally and, and physically. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Um, was there anything for the third birth that you were apprehensive about that you were kind of worried about? Um, yes, there was a fear because I think uh, there was a part of me which was still afraid. Of birth, um, until the birth I, itself, or the process of birth, or just everything, you know, because I had never really, really done it. Two okay. babies in, and I had never really done it. So I had this thing that until I make it, I'm not sure if I will make it, you know. <laughs> okay. So you mean through just the unmedicated portion? Yeah, like will I be able to finally have that natural birth, and will I be actually be able to, you know? be that woman who's following her instincts and okay. not listen to, you know, the advices that are being pushed towards me by the medics and everything. Okay. So until I reached the end and the baby was in my arms, I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it. <laughs> okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, what, what do you think about any of your preparation or even during the labor helped you the most? Um, I cannot... Um, you know, insist the importance of having a doula because okay. honestly, you know everything. <laughs> you have not saying this just because I'm sitting here. Okay. No, no, I'm not. I'm okay. not really because I'll tell you why. Because you know everything. 
you mm. know but at that point when you're in that situation for somebody to just remind you in this okay. you know most um, not interventional way just letting you know you know what this is what the plan is just keeps you going okay. you know and somehow you tend to at that point i i feel women kind of stop thinking very rationally so if somebody was to thrust you with an advice that is even against your plan at that vulnerable point you mm-hmm. might just go for it so if you have that someone who's just standing by you like you know who's kind of in charge not completely but just letting you know you know this is what is the plan it just keeps you going because labor sometimes can take quite a while you know yeah yeah, yeah. i wouldn't say necessarily in charge but somebody mm-hmm. who's like more mentally separated yeah. from the experience you're exactly. having okay yes, yes. Okay. just in what what surprised you about the experience the fact that um i was actually quite strong you know i mean <laughs> until after fatima was born and you know my nights after that sitting up feeding her i would ponder and i was like where was that woman you know who could actually just the the doctor is saying something the nurses are saying something and who would just be like no but i'm doing mine i never knew i had that woman in me and surprisingly that woman has that day on walked out of the hospital and she is that woman even today oh, like you know i don't need people to tell me this is what if i don't find it right i can actually stand up for myself okay and it took me that decision of everybody telling me lie down and i said no i want to stand up okay. i i don't really care what's <laughs> your well, why don't you go into that a bit so there's like a concept or a clarity yeah so um is. towards the end of um, the whole journey of labor the time came to push the baby out mm-hmm. and as we were doing that the doctor i could just hear words being thrown from one doctor to the other and the nurses and they were saying that it's going to take another 15 minutes okay she's almost there and all of that and they wanted me to lie down in a position suitable for the doctor to bring the baby out but uh, something in me told me that i can't do this lying down i need to stand up okay and um, i spoke and they did not listen and it so happened that the doctor had to walk out of the room i think to visit another mother at that point because she expected it to take another 10 15 minutes mm-hmm. and something in me just said i don't care who's who here but i feel i am in charge and i have to stand up and i just held on to my doula's hand right and i just stood up mm-hmm. and that was it the baby was out mm-hmm. and the baby was out i think in half or maybe less than half the time that they had anticipated and it was the best feeling you know i think the pain that i was feeling lying down on the bed mm-hmm. while the smoothness with which the baby just came out it was the most relieving feeling you okay. know and um, post that i think the doctor had an issue with it but it didn't matter to me <laughs> <laughs> at that point i can say very you know like confidently that it was me who gave birth and i even if the ob wasn't there it would be okay okay yeah okay is there anything else from the like the labor experience that you want to share because it was is what do you what did you think about the labor, labor itself yeah okay honestly i've always been someone who's very freaked out of medical setups like for some reason the beep beep and the sanitizer smell it just freaks me out yeah? okay and um, i realized that i had a pattern where my contractions would just stop the minute i am in that setup mm. and fortunately or unfortunately we have to give birth in that setup so the third time around i had learned to play with my <laughs> senses which is even if i was in the hospital i stopped feeling you know the vibe of the hospital okay and i would just try to find a corner in the hospital that didn't seem like a hospital you know and just try to work with that and completely block everybody else at that point i think labor is one of those days labor the day that you're laboring that you have the right to feel like a princess and just block out everybody else because now when i think i only remember the good stuff the pain is just gone somewhere and i, I wouldn't even want to call it pain honestly okay. because it's not like the pain of a pinch you know it's it's a beautiful surge it's a beautiful wave that goes through the body and today i can say that yes every wave actually was worth it because it took me closer mm-hmm. doesn't matter how many hours the clock ticked away but you know like literally every surge that came 
was like a victory towards the baby. So okay. uh, also I feel that um, I think you should be mentally prepared for labor before you go in. You know, it's like it's true that it's a marathon that you have to run physically. Mm -hmm. But I think many women tend to forget the mental part of it. Like how would I be feeling, say, three hours into labor? How would I be feeling seven hours into labor? What is the role of my husband through all of this? Like you have to kind of picture it and, you know, kind of dream about it in a good way. Yeah. And uh, definitely not watch what the movies show, the screaming <laughs> woman. <laughs> you know, definitely that's not what labor looks like. You might scream, but that scream is going to be, you know, like the most beautiful part. I remember before um, the baby came, I went to see the labor rooms. Okay. Yeah, so I, I went to visit and I think someone was having a birth. So as I was waiting outside for the midwife to show up, the mother gave birth and she was screaming. Okay. And I began to cry. Okay. And I told my husband, if that's how it's going to sound, I don't want to do it. Okay? <laughs> okay. And my husband tells me that when I gave birth to Fatima, I was screaming worse. <laughs> he said, you were screaming much louder than that lady that we had heard. You know, and I was like, really? But I, I didn't sound like I was in that much pain because when I was screaming, I was actually enjoying. The, the scream was not a scream of pain. Okay. It was just a scream of, you know, like as if you're just venting out. And I think it kind of helps get the baby out quicker. I don't know. <laughs> maybe okay. there is a science behind it. <laughs> yeah, maybe it helps your lungs expand. I don't know. But it just feels good is what I'm saying. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And uh, other than that, of course, like um, meditation or whatever, you know, seeking divine help, I think helps like at the end of the day, God, yeah, he makes things easy for you and um, just enjoy, like enjoy, man, as in labor and the whole experience of pregnancy. Um, if you ask a woman right after she's given birth, would you want to do this again? Maybe her answer would be no, but I'm telling you three months in it. <laughs> like I, I wouldn't mind going through all of that just for the, you know, the, the feeling of empowerment that a woman has when she goes into labor prepared. Okay. Just to feel all of those emotions once more. I wouldn't mind having okay. another birth. Yeah. It's a bit of a euphoric high sometimes after mm -hmm. you have finish the delivery and it's just like a breath of yes ah, definitely yes 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 okay um so afterwards how did how did you feel like in that day in that moment in um compared to my other two birds because the first of course was a c-section and recovery post um c-section was quite complicated honestly okay and um not the most best ex not the best experience to have actually uh, but because it was my first baby, I was still like, you know, a little dreamy eyes about it and all of that. Okay. Uh, the second birth, because I was recovering from the epidural again. So what happens is um, you're not in pain at all and then all of a sudden it comes up, right? Okay. So there is no smoothness to the pain and that is why it uh. can become a little traumatic at that point okay but with my third baby i i like the baby was out and i was having chicken noodles <laughs> you know <laughs> okay. and enjoying it because yeah. like you know that that's it nothing nothing much to do of course there was um some stitches that i had but they healed quite quicker and you know mm -hmm. basically i think i enjoyed my baby the third time around okay yeah. the first couple of days or just because you didn't have that extra recovery time yeah like recovery was very easy at that point of course i rested and by now i knew that you know resting was um, no guilt so i <laughs> yeah. was resting and of course the other two were at the uh, you know care of their father okay. and uh, yeah I, I i enjoyed my baby the third time around i feel the most like i think my baby probably would have enjoyed her mother the most okay the third time around yes uh -huh. interesting <laughs> okay, so do you have any other advice um, for somebody preparing for birth? Um, yes, so do all the shopping, get your color-coded clothing, everything, but there's nothing, uh, no bigger gift you can give your baby than just preparing for birth, labor, uh, no matter what way, you know, not necessarily a course, but mm -hmm. like, you know, build that village community where you have women sharing experiences, talking to each other, and um, 
I wouldn't say go knocking at every door for advice because sometimes <laughs> I think it's the mother's instincts at that moment that just do miracles. Yeah. But so. definitely get companionship, you know, amongst the women around you. Be selfish. Be so selfish that you've never been, you know, no matter how kind-hearted <laughs> you are. Like take care of yourself. Yeah. I think this is the ideal time to like, you know, invest in your own body and your mind and everything. do every take every guilty pleasure that you ever dreamt about and just you know go for it because once the baby comes you're going to have to share those right yeah you're never going to have an ice cream alone so go have that <laughs> have yeah, that absolutely. ice cream and you know like of course nutritionally have a rich diet so that you know you you don't experience the fatigue and you know, post birth mm-hmm. but at the same time a pizza once a day won't hurt so it's okay <laughs> Once in a while. Once in a while. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your stories. Thanks.